<laughs> okay, last time we made a Detroit Red Wings related video, things did not go too well. The last time we made a video like this, we talked about Pia Suta, a brand new NHL free agent who I said should go to the Red Wings because... He was a guy who was the best player in the Swiss League, and his former two linemates when he was a very good OHL player with the Guelph Storm were Tyler Bertuzzi and Robbie Fabry. Well, just yesterday, Pia Suta ended up signing a contract with the Chicago Blackhawks, so boohoo. Today though, we're focusing on an idea that is not brought upon by me. Let's go over onto the DetroitNews.com to check out this article written by Ted Culfin. This article was published earlier on July 14th, and it is titled this. Possible trade targets for the Red Wings who have the money to be buyers. Now, this is an important aspect, and we've been talking about it in several different videos, but... The fact that the NHL salary cap is going to be flat for the next two to three years means that some teams that are already pressed up against the cap are going to be kind of screwed when it comes to how they're going to work things out in the future. We've had a lot of NHL teams over the past two, three calendar years who have made these long-term big money signings with the intention and the hope that the salary cap rises year after year after year, making these big money deals that they signed in the past a little bit more easier to swallow as time goes by. But because we have a flat cap, that whole idea is out the window, at least for the foreseeable short term future. And one of the teams that is in this predicament is the Toronto Maple Leafs. The fact that they have Matthews over there in a big contract, they have Mitch Marner over there at a big contract, and they have Tavares over there at a big contract, all making over $10 million. It's certainly a sight to behold when you take a look at their projected cap space that they have for 2020 2021, which is is about $4.5 million. Not to mention the re-signings that they're going to have to do for guys like Jason Spezza, Frederick Gauthier, Cody Ceci, yeah, right, Tyson Berry, and a few other guys. It's certainly something that you have to take a look at. Which is why I wanted to take a look at this Detroit News article because Ted Culfin goes over a few players around the NHL who belong to teams that will have a lot more difficulty in keeping contracts and money than the Red Wings would. This article lists a few different players from a few different teams, but I wanted to focus on the last two players that are listed. They are from the Toronto Maple Leafs, and their names are Kasperi Kapanen and Andreas Janssen. Of course, as always, I'll leave a link in the description to this article so you can read on the other players around the league that Colvin suggests could be Red Wings trade targets. There are a lot of St. Louis Blues guys on here. There are some Tampa Bay guys on here. It's a very interesting read. But the two guys I wanted to focus on are Kapanen and Janssen, let's read what Culfin has to say. Kasperi Kapanen is a Toronto winger signed for two more seasons at $3.2 million per year. Kapanen, who is 23 years old, had 13 goals and 36 points on a Leafs roster that has no wiggle room. Kapanen might be the type of low-key acquisition that thrives with a bigger chance somewhere else. As for Andreas Janssen, Culfin says that he is signed for three more years at $3.4 million a year. Janssen had eight goals and 13 assists in 43 games played, and is another young player who is 25 who may benefit from a larger role. Do I disagree with anything that Culfin said here? No, absolutely not. I think that everything he said here is factual, and you could definitely argue that what he said is right. But what I will say is that I don't think he did a good job in pitching these players to the audience. So that's what I'm going to go over here and try to do myself. Back, I want to say, two years ago, after I went to LA and after I kind of returned back, I was mostly a YouTube channel that focused on Vancouver Canucks stuff and, believe it or not, Leafs stuff. There was a good portion in 2018 where I only made Canucks and Leafs videos, but as time wore on, I eventually fell in love with the Canadians and the Red Wings, and I sort of fell out of love with the Leafs a little bit, which is why the Leafs videos became a little bit more scarce as time went on and more teams started making appearances on the channel, like the Red Wings, like the Habs, like the Senators, the Kings, the Rangers, etc. But... 
Even back as far in 2018, I was making videos talking about guys like Kapanen, talking about guys like Janssen. Kasperi Kapanen was a former first round draft pick from the 2014 NHL entry draft, taken by the Pittsburgh Penguins 22nd overall. He was a guy who was supposed to become a pretty good middle six winger, but his potential got challenged once he was traded to Toronto in the Phil Kessel trade. Yes, a very iconic moment in Toronto Maple Leafs history. History. Ever since that day though, and ever since making the Maple Leafs full-time, Kasperi Kapanen has established himself as, when he's on his game at least, one of the fastest players in the entire NHL. In his most previous few seasons, he's had 24 points in the AHL, 44 in the NHL, and 36 in the NHL as well. And the fact is, he is only 23 years old, so there is still a lot more room for a player like this to grow. Kapanen is a swift and speedy guy who can play really good on the PK and get his fair share of offense once in a while on a few breakaways and a few odd man rushes here and there too. He's a guy who, if you add this to the Red Wing system, this could be a very nice acquisition into your top six, maybe your middle six if you want to push it, but overall, this is a kind of guy who, if you play him with a speedster like a Dylan Larkin, then who knows what the possibilities can go forward with. Obviously, that's just one example that I can think of, but Larkin and Kapanen are both two guys drafted in 2014, so they are going to be the same age. Seeing them develop into the long-term future as wing partners definitely sounds intriguing to me. But when it comes to the other guy, Andreas Janssen, he's had a little bit of a different story. He wasn't acquired via trade, but he was acquired via draft in 2013 in the seventh round. Back when Andreas Janssen was drafted, he was playing in the Super Elite, the Junior 20 League, and he was really, really good. I personally had no idea why this guy dropped to the seventh round, but he was there and the Leafs picked him up. After a few years of developing in Sweden and eventually the AHL, there were a few work ethic issues that Andreas Janssen kind of brought to the table, but eventually fans realized that it wasn't work ethic issues, the guy just had an undiagnosed case of asthma that was then revealed later on and kind of revealed just why Janssen kind of looked like he gave up on some shifts earlier in his career. But ever since then, he played for the Toronto Marlies where he was a very, very good point producer, and eventually making his debut with the Leafs two seasons ago, he posted up 43 points in 73 games. This past season, he's been injured here and there, he didn't play all the games, he had 21 points in 43 games played, but the fact is, Andreas Janssen has 25 years under his belt, he still has room to grow, and he still has more room to develop into a very good top 6 caliber forward. The thing is, these guys play on the Leafs, where top six forwards are very, very plentiful, and the fact is they're both making over $3 million a year. With the cap crunch that the Maple Leafs may be facing towards the next few seasons, these guys, as well as Alexander Kerfoot, have been kind of in that conversation as to potential Leafs trade candidates for the past few months, I would say. When you ask Leaf fans, oh, who are you guys going to trade to open up cap space? It's always the same names. It's Kerfoot, it's Janssen, it's Kapanen. The fact is, they have a lot of top six forwards. The fact is, there's so many of them that they could expend some of the other ones that they have. And the fact is, if the Red Wings want to capitalize on this, they have the cap space, they have the room, and they probably have the draft picks and maybe even the prospects to make it worthwhile for a team like Toronto. So, if the Red Wings are able to get a pitch out for Andreas Janssen and for Kasperi Kapanen, two guys who could honestly become solid consistent, maybe let's just say 50-55 point scorers in this league, it certainly would be a bet that I would like to take if I was Steve Eiserman looking at this objectively. If you're a fan of Detroit, you have literally no reason to look at this kind of idea and say, no, I don't want to do it. What do you think? Christopher N. or Franz Nielsen are going to be better than these two? I don't think so. Add a Kapanen and a Janssen to your top six, and all of a sudden things look pretty gosh darn good now, don't they? You can never have enough good point producers and goal scorers, but if your team is in the situation like the Leafs are, where they really need to open up some money, then a move like this, where the Red Wings send maybe a few picks and a few prospects for any of these guys, definitely seems like a plausible kind of deal. So, talk to me in the comments below what you think about Kasperi Kapanen and Andreas Janssen. Would you want Steve Eiserman to do it? And if you're a Leafs fan, would you want Steve Eiserman to give you prospects for this kind of return? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and...
Bye.